All right, with the States of Matter movie, please go ahead and double check the notes that you took during the Moodle lesson were correct. So with the Moodle lesson, you took notes on solids, liquids, and gases, about the characteristics of the States of Matter, the movements in the particles, and you drew the um, particles in each state. So please double check, double check to make sure that's correct, and then please take notes on the new material which you're going to see in yellow. So again, there are three main states of matter. There's solids, liquids, and gases, and there's a lot of different things that you can find in your daily life that exist in each of those states. The key with solids is solids have particles that have a definite shape and a definite volume. Solids do. Um, the particles in a solid are locked in place. They actually vibrate next to each other, so they are moving back and forth, but they can't move past each other. They're locked in place compared to the other particles around them. Liquids are a little bit different. Liquids do have a definite volume. You can measure them in a graduated cylinder to measure the volume. But they do not have a definite shape. They'll fill up whatever the bottom of whatever container you pour them into. Liquids have a little bit more energy than particles, and the particles are able to move past each other, as you may remember from the movie we saw in class, or that you can look at on Moodle. But they are not moving so fast that they can actually pull away from each other. There's still a lot of attraction, so they're still very close together. Gases, on the other hand, do not have a definite shape, nor do they have a definite volume. When you open up a, a container of perfume in class, pretty soon everybody smells that perfume because that gas fills up the entire space of the entire room. Gases move much faster, and they have enough energy that they've overcome the attraction of the other particles that are around them, and so they will fill whatever space is available to them. The states of matter all depend on molecular motion. Solids are going to have the slowest moving particles, liquids in between, and then gases are going to have the fastest moving particles. What's going to happen if you look at what's going on if you start with a solid like ice and you start adding heat? In a solid, as we learned about, the particles cannot slide past each other. They're just vibrating but are locked in place next to their neighboring particles. As you continue to add heat and you add energy to those particles, they start moving faster and faster. Eventually, they're over, able to overcome the attraction of the nearest particles right next to them, and they're able to slide past each other. And that's when you have liquid water, and it's become a liquid. As you, The particles in this state, though, while they can slide past each other, are still attracted to each other very closely. And so they are not able to um, completely escape the attraction from the neighboring particles. As you add more and more energy, it heats up, eventually it'll start boiling, and you're going to create steam. And in steam, the particles now have so much energy that they're able to overcome the attraction of the molecules closest to them, and they're able to just fly off, basically. Um, they will still occasionally uh, interact with other molecules, occasionally collide, but they will now basically have the most amount of energy, and they're going to fly around and hit into each other the freezing point and melting point of a substance is when a substance turns from a liquid to a solid. The boiling point is going to be when a substance turns from a, a liquid to a gas. And these are characteristic properties, meaning you can use these to identify a substance. Please make sure you put that in your notes. If we take a look at it, for example, oxygen gas, if you didn't know what a, a certain substance was, but you saw that it would boil and go from a, a liquid to a gas at minus 183 degrees Celsius, you could be pretty darn sure that that's going to be oxygen gas because the boiling point of oxygen is negative 183 degrees Celsius, and that is a characteristic property. Here we can see how uh, solids change, or how substances change states. Again, if you start with the solid and add energy, it's going to melt and become a liquid. As you continue to add energy, it's either going to evaporate or, if you add enough energy, even boil and become a gas. We can go the other direction. If we cool a gas down, it's going to condense back to a liquid. And if we cool a liquid down, eventually it's going to freeze into a solid. That's what you need to know about changes of state. Here's the brief stuff that you need to know about the lab. Again, make sure you're taking notes and also writing questions. Before you can understand what's going to happen in this lab, you need to make sure you understand atmospheric pressure. Copy this definition into your notes. Atmospheric pressure basically is just the weight of the air that's above us pushing down upon us. And it pushes down on every surface at about 16 pounds per square inch. 
The reason that you aren't crushed right now is because your body is also pushing out at 16 pounds per square inch. The reason an empty can isn't crushed is the air is inside the can is also pushing back at 16 pounds per square inch, so the forces are balanced and there's no change in motion. Now let's look at what happens with the lab. So for the implosion lab, you'll need a number of pieces of equipment. You'll need a, a can, soda can, you'll need a hot plate, beaker, you need to put your goggles on obviously, um, beaker tongs, graduated cylinder, and then a bucket that has water in it. What you're going to go ahead and do is before you start the lab, you'll go ahead and measure the volume that your can contains. Now you will notice if you read carefully in your can, it gives you a volume number, but that's not specific about whether that was the liquid in the can or the total space. So you need to figure out a way to go ahead and measure how much liquid does the can contain when you completely fill it all the way to the top. Your number should be fairly close to that, but figure out exactly what it takes for yours. There's a number of ways to do that. Talk with your lab group, figure out what you think is going to work best. After you've done that, go ahead and measure 10 milliliters of water and in your graduate cylinder, remember to read it at eye level, um, straight up and down bottom of the meniscus and go ahead and pour that 10 milliliters into the bottom of your can. Now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and heat up your can on the hot plate. Before you turn your hot plate on, please do make sure that the cord is well away from the actual hot plate itself so it's not going to come in contact with the hot plate because that could cause the cord to melt and uh, could be an emergency as far as uh, electricity and you could really hurt yourself. So please do make sure that stretch the hot plate out or just wrap it around something that there's no way it's going to come in contact with something that's hot. Then go ahead and plug it in, turn it on, and you'll go ahead and leave it on until you see quite a bit of steam coming out of the top of your can. You're going to want to wait at least two minutes until you've seen quite a lot of steam coming out of the top of your can. And at that point, you're going to go ahead and use your beaker tongs, grab the bottom of the can, and then very quickly turn it upside down into the liquid water bath that you have. You have to do that very quickly. You have to make sure the whole top of the can is submerged, and you need to make sure that you have your goggles on while you're doing that part of the lab. Do remember the hot plate will stay very hot, so do not touch it. Do not allow your beaker tongs to touch it or anything else to touch it or your lab mates. Um, make sure that you do unplug the hot plate when you're done and wear your goggles when you finish. Do make sure that you measure the volume of your can again to find an accurate measurement. You can use tape if you need to to help you out with that. Make sure you ask your teacher or write down any questions that you have. Thank you.